All of a sudden, Winnie the Pooh doesn't look that bad. Why are bees so important, these little things? One out of every three bites of food we take actually depends on bees for pollination, like apples, pumpkins, carrots, almonds. Some plants need a very specific kind of bee. Tomatoes need bumblebees. Really? Yeah, and it's not just about those specific foods. Yeah. It's also about our food security because without bees, we will have less food. It's also about ecosystems though yeah. as well. About 85% of flowering plants depend on bees for pollination. So if bees go away, entire ecosystems can collapse. And these are the base of the food system, the base of the food web. And so they're a really important part of the environment. And we as human beings are very connected to that web. Right. We're in the web, so right. to speak. We're hearing about all of this uh, bee colony collapse. Is that mm -hmm. the right word? Is that well, that is what they started calling it in 2007. Uh-oh, so I'm behind the times. We no longer call it that. That's what we called it when it was a mystery. What it's, are we calling it now? Now we just talk about um, losing bees because we're not seeing the kind of collapse we did back in 2007. We're just losing bees year-round now. Really? Really. So last wait year... A minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. How many different varieties of bees are there? This is an excellent question. So when we talk about bees and we talk about hives and losing them, yeah. we're often talking about honeybees, which are not native to the United States, but they're very, very important nonetheless. We use them to pollinate many of our crops. We use them to make honey. And the reason we talk about them a lot is because we have the data. We know that 30 to 40% of the colonies, we're losing them every year. But it turns out there are actually 4,000 native bee species in the United States, which is a really overwhelming number. That are not honeybees. That are not honeybees. And wow. those are the native bees. And they're really critical to our food system. And they're really critical to our ecosystems. And the thing about losing honeybees, they're what's called a managed pollinator. So they're a little a bit- A what pollinator? A managed pollinator. So managed. they're a little bit like livestock. Beekeepers keep them. And you know they know they lose a third of their hives. And they can reconstitute them. But there's no one out there doing something to reconstitute all of the native bees we're losing for the very same reasons that we're losing honeybees. And the crisis is definitely something we're seeing worldwide. It's not something that's just happening in the United States. And so why is it happening? There are a lot of factors, including habitat loss, climate change, disease. But the overwhelming factor and the new factor is a class of pesticides called the neonicotinoids. We call them neonics for short. It rolls off the tongue a little bit better. Neonic. They're a somewhat new kind of pesticide, and they work in a really unusual way. They're what's called a systemic insecticide, and what that means is actually a little bit scary. If you spray a normal pesticide, it kills the insects right then and there, and that's that. The neonics actually become part of the plant. So the pesticide is part of the pollen, it's part of the leaves, it's part of the flower petals, it's in every part of the plant. So the plant itself is a pesticide. And so you can understand why that's such a big problem for bees. Was that by design? or that is was it by design. Really? Yeah, um, and what's really scary about that as, is as these pesticides accumulate, in the ecosystem, which they do because they don't degrade very fast, lots of plants in the ecosystem have this pesticide in them. This pesticide is a lawful pesticide? I mean, you're- It is. They are on the market. They are used very heavily. The EU is starting to take action. They've taken three of the neonics um, largely off the market. And in Canada, they're taking steps in that direction as well. Is this something you or I could buy at a, at a at a nursery, you could. Unfortunately, yes. So not only can you buy these pesticides at the store, you can buy a plant that has been treated with these pesticides and not even know it. So you could be planting something in your backyard garden that has been treated with a neonic and contains these insecticides and you wouldn't even know. If they're so toxic, which they clearly mm -hmm. are, why are we still using them? What is the appeal of, of these, the evil neonics? They're the number one most popular insecticide around the world. We're using them 
indiscriminately. We're using them when we don't even need to. One of the most popular uses is actually is what's called a seed treatment. So they treat corn and they treat soy and they treat the seeds. They're coated in the neonics. And so when they plant corn, when the corn grows, it already has the neonic in it. And they treat virtually all of the corn in the United States and a third to half of the soybeans. The really frustrating thing about this is that the science shows, and EPA has even found, that many of these uses do absolutely nothing to improve yields for farmers. We're using these poisons in the environment and they're not with no benefit. No, absolutely no benefit. Wow. And the farmers don't even have a choice. It's very difficult to buy corn that has not already been treated with neonics. Really? And so every time a farmer goes out there and plants corn, they're planting these pesticides and putting them in the environment. If you're going to the market and you find organic corn, could that would be okay. That would be okay. Yeah. Just check it. <laughs> Something that's interesting about them is you can't wash them off it's part of the fruit or part of the vegetable. And we're starting to see evidence of human health effects as well. And so this is something we're really going to have to keep an eye on and do something about. Is there a certain company or companies that are, tar are, that are making these neonics? One company makes the vast majority of neonic pesticides and that's Bayer. Do these. you mean Bayer as in Bayer aspirin? That is correct, Bayer as in Bayer aspirin. God, what a bummer. I'm Tylenol here on that. <laughs> <I know. laughs> what is Bayer's response uh, when when they are confronted with the, the the horrors of making these neonics? So Bayer has a huge advertising campaign and social media accounts for their Bayer Bee Care Center. Because no way. They want to show that they're doing whatever they can to protect bees. They love to muddy the waters about neonics and the impact they have on bees. And they love to point to the other threats to bees like disease, essentially to say, it's not our products, it's, it's something else. What can we do, what can I do as an, an average citizen mm -hmm. uh, to, to save the bees and thereby the ripple effect of saving the bees. What can we do? What action can we take? The most important thing to do is to call your elected officials, whether at a local level, the state level, or the federal level, because at every level of government, there's more we could be doing. We could be planting habitat, we could be regulating these pesticides. Right. As our elected officials hear from concerned citizens, they will be motivated to act. But also there are things you can do in your everyday life. You can make sure you avoid pesticides in your yard and you can plant native, diverse flowering habitat. That's great for bees, yeah. but it's also great for butterflies and other wildlife. Right. What are you doing at NRDC about bees specific? We filed a lawsuit against EPA a couple of years ago, actually, because EPA didn't take a look at the impact of these pesticides on endangered species, many of which include insects and bees. There's a bee that's very near and dear to my heart because we worked for many years to get it listed as an endangered species, the rusty patched bumblebee. And that is- Sounds adorable. It is absolutely adorable. It was one of the four most common bumblebees in the United States, and it has lost about 90% of its habitat. So it's very endangered. So what we did is we worked to get that bee listed as endangered, and then we sued EPA because it failed to take into account the effects of the neonic pesticides on that endangered species. But it's not just bees, and so our lawsuit covers lots of things. These pesticides are bad for fish, they're bad for birds, they're bad for deer, and they're bad for humans. I was about to say, I have a feeling they're bad for us. <laughs> yes, yeah. and so our lawsuit has lots of endangered species in it, not just bees, because yeah it's important that EPA take a look at the impacts on all of these wildlife. So all of a sudden, Winnie the Pooh doesn't look that bad. Mm -hmm.